Hey guys, welcome back to Shop Life. Today we're going to be uh, taking out this intake manifold out of this 2002 325i and we're going to be replacing it with another intake manifold. Well, pretty much what, why you would do this is if you were going to replace like all of the vacuum lines or whatever, so like the crankcase ventilation system and all the little lines that go in the back. It's going to be a lot easier for you to do it when you have the manifold out. I think honestly, if you take the manifold out, the time they spend doing that is pretty much how long you're going to be spending trying to fiddle around trying to replace the vacuum lines. So let's go ahead and get started. This process should be the same for any E46 because they pretty much all have the same manifolds. Even some E39s, you should be able to do the same process. Uh, this one in particular has a 2.5 liter engine, so it's the 325. And I mean the 330, all the motors are practically the same in removal and putting it back together, just the parts might be a little different. So first things first, what you're gonna do is you're gonna remove the intake box. Then you're gonna remove this micro filter uh, assembly. This is the cabin filter and all that. You're gonna remove these boots. And then you're gonna remove all the covers. And then we're gonna go ahead and start removing some of the fuel rail bolts and the harnesses that are connected to that. So for the intake box, all you gotta remove are the two tens right here. And then the two clips that hold the mass airflow sensor right here. And unhook the connector for the MAF. Once you have that out, then you just lift that up. Yours might have a little duct or vent right here, so you might have to like wiggle it out like this a little bit. Here's this radiator support. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and remove these two hoses off of the intake boots, and we're gonna go to remove the intake boot. All right, so once you have the intake boot off, now you're gonna to go to remove this cabin filter assembly. All right, so these are gonna be T30 bolts. There's four of them. One right there, two right there, and one on the other edge. Once you have that off, what you could do is you, you can go ahead, there's, there's wires in this little compartment right here. So what you could do is there's clips that hold the little cover on here. There's one, two, three, and four clips. Just pop those off and then pull the cover off and just pull all the wires out. So once you have the wires out, this just slides out like that. All right, now we can go ahead and remove this cover right here. It's just held in with two 10 millimeter bolts, one right here and one right there. And then once you have those out, just slide it out. All right, next what you're gonna do, you're gonna remove this connector off of the uh, DESA valve. This little push pin right here, the metal, metal pin. Push that in and lift out. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, loosen this dipstick tube. That's held in by a 13 millimeter bolt right onto the engine mount arm. And that's a 13, so just go ahead and loosen that off. Once you loosen that, you can move this a little bit out of the way. Next, what you're gonna do, you're gonna remove this DESA valve. In order to remove that, what you, all you have to do is remove these two Torx bolts, one up here, and one right here. All right, so both of those bolts are T40. Next, you're just gonna pull this out. Just like that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and unhook this brake booster vacuum line. You can just pull it out from right here. Just like that. And now we're gonna go ahead and remove uh, this harness box, which is held in with a 10 millimeter bolt right here, a 10 millimeter nut right here, and another 10 millimeter nut underneath this intake boot. And that, uh, that last nut is actually on the throttle body itself. And you can go ahead and disconnect this connector for the idle control valve. like that. Next you're gonna go ahead and disconnect the connector for this purge valve right here. Just like that. And then you're gonna go ahead and connect, disconnect the hose that's going to the purge valve from right here. Basically this is just like you had to push the two tabs on the side and you pull down. To make it easier what you could do is you could remove this whole purge valve. Basically how it's hooked up is there's this little, in, the little hole right here and there's a little metal bracket that the rubber piece slides onto. 
That way you can actually see what you're doing. There we go. So for now what you could do to make the whole process a lot easier is to remove this lower intake boot as well. It's held in with two clamps, one over here and one on the throttle body. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna unhook the rest of the connectors that are with this harness box. There's one that goes through a throttle body. All you gotta do is you push the tab in on this side. Then you pull off the connector. Just like that. Next, you're gonna take the connectors off of the back of the intake. There's actually one part where they are zip tied to the intake. Uh, it's right in the back, right before the connector. All right, so the zip tie is right where my finger's at. You're just gonna have to cut that zip tie off. Now, once you have that zip tie off, you're just gonna have to unhook the connector in the back. And it's just like all the other ones with the metal clip. And then the last connector, the thickest one, the thickest wire, actually goes to this fuel rail box right here. And it connects to all six of these uh, injectors, and it also connects to this oil temperature sensor right here. Pull out just like that. You're also gonna have to remove this. Uh, this is the connector that goes to the CCV. Push the two tabs in. And now you're gonna have to get off all these clips. So first what you're gonna do, you're gonna go to remove this O2 sensors right here. Just get them out of the way. All right, so now what you have to do, as you see there's two metal clips on each one of these injectors. You have to pry both of the clips off. Like that, and then you have to get the other one off as well. They're in the middle now. This will allow you to release this connector. So you have to do that to all six, and then you can actually pull this off. So go ahead and do that to all six. Now you can remove these clips for the O2 sensor by just squeezing right here. Just like that. And then once you have the fuel rail connectors off, go ahead and lock the clips back in, that way you don't lose them. Next what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna vacuum or blow out all of the dirt that's right here in front of the intake manifold. Get all that dirt up in all six of the spots. All right, so now these are all size 11 millimeter nuts. We're gonna get all of those nuts off. All right, so once you have all those nuts off, we're gonna go ahead and remove this throttle body, that way we have easier access to the last bolt that's held in on the bottom. The throttle body is only held in with four 10 millimeter bolts. There's one at each corner. All right, so this is how the throttle body is gonna be inside the intake manifold, just like this. So you have a bolt right here, one right there, one right in this corner, and one right there. And this is the nut where the harness is hooked up onto right here. And that's the connector that we unhooked earlier. All right, so the last bolt that's holding this intake manifold in is a 16 millimeter bolt or nut, which is right there. It was, it was blocked by our throttle body, but now you can see it. All right, so now that you have that bolt, uh, the nut off, what you're gonna do is you're gonna unhook this last uh, connector to the CCV. And this actually goes straight to the dipstick. So you can either take it off of the dipstick or from right here, just push the two sides and pull down. Just like that. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift up this intake manifold. When you lift it, one last thing that's still gonna be connected is the fuel rail hose. So the, the fuel line that goes to the uh, fuel rail. That's gonna be behind the manifold. It's gonna be a lot easier to unhook it once you have the manifold up. Uh, you might also have a few hoses or cords that are running down this way. The other hose that is gonna be going there is a secondary air pump. 
you can go ahead and remove that from right here. There we go. All right, so before you go ahead and pull up the manifold, go ahead and remove this positive terminal cable. And that is a 19. So what you might also want to remove is this engine coolant temperature sensor. You can't really access it until you remove this manifold. So once you have that out of the way, same with that metal push pin right here, and it just lifts right out. Now we can remove the connector. So now that you have that out of the way, you can see the rest of the connectors that are in the way. And then go ahead and unhook the fuel rail. So the fuel rail was connected to right here, that hose. The hose just has this little connector which you have to push the tabs in and that will release the fitting. You're also gonna have to go ahead and feed this positive terminal cable through that manifold. This goes to the starter and then it goes ultimately to right here. Uh, make sure you don't get anything into these holes because that will damage a lot of stuff. All right, so that's how you remove the intake manifold. So while you have it out, here's a few things that I would recommend replacing. Mainly, you're gonna have to replace this gasket, uh, mainly because when you take it off, it's a one-time use gasket, so go ahead and replace that. You're also gonna have to replace, we're well, not gonna have to, but I would recommend it while it's already out, the entire CCB system, which is pretty much this right here, and all the hoses that are attached with it, I would replace all of those, and then I would also replace all these vacuum hoses in the back, th these two in particular, and then check all the caps, uh, there's, they're all right here. There's two, one right here and one right here. Check those caps, make sure there's no holes or any tears in them. Uh, replace the secondary air pump. It's a hard line with a rubber line that attaches here and then to the other section of the secondary air pump. Replace all of those. Check all these hoses. Any hose is pretty much vacuum related. Check them all. And if you can, just go ahead and replace them even if they look okay. They're, they're not that hard to replace while all this is out. I'll clean the throttle body, clean the idle control valve. The throttle body in, uh, in general, make sure you do not move the flap. So just clean it without touching the flap. Because once you touch the flap, you can easily, uh, what do you call it, mess up the calibration, and then it's gonna be really hard for you to recalibrate it. And sometimes you might even damage the entire system, so you might have to replace the throttle body. So when you're cleaning it, just don't touch the flap. Clean all around it, and you'll be all right. You go ahead and clean the idle control valve as well. Uh, that's not that hard to do. And all these, just use the throttle body cleaner. All that will take care of that. Make sure you get a new gasket for your throttle body as well. And uh, get a new gasket for your DESA valve. Also, if you want, you can go ahead and get your injectors clean. If you're gonna have your car down for like a week or two, you can send them in to like, there's many people online that will advertise for it. They'll do it pretty much, it's called an ultrasonic bath and it'll replace all the seals and stuff in there. Uh, they, I think they charge like 15 or $16 in an injector and they'll clean them all up and pretty much refurbish them. So that's it for today guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions or any comments, feel free to leave a comment down below. And that's it for today guys. Thanks for watching.